Can we give the Lord that praise right quick through here? Come on, come on, Dream Center. Give me a little more monitors. Hallelujah. Before you sit down, tell two people God's got a miracle with your name on it. Let me have a little more monitors, please. Little gain in your monitors. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Our God is, is an awesome God. Let me say that I have a lot of people that I want to give honor to tonight. Because where there's no honor, there's no glory. Now I know y'all done saying holy music. I don't want no more music for about 10 minutes. But every now and then, and click your Leslie switch, thank you. I used to play, I can tell when I hear it. Every now and then, you got to give God just a raw praise. When I say raw, it goes from thoughts to heart to lips. From your thoughts, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, then it filters down. I wish I'd have called and told you, don't put any silent people on the front row. No, I'm very serious. They are my... They actually put static between my lines. Because when I grew up, they used to put the mothers on the front row. Now, somebody in the front thought I was referring to you. You're not that important. I'm referring to the spirit of silence. Paul and Silas would have been in jail if they were quiet at midnight. Midnight was not their time out. They could have came out whenever they opened their mouths, but they didn't pray and sing praises until midnight. Some of you wait too long to do what you should have been did before. Come on, talk to me. We're going to be blessed. Some of us could have been married, could have been millionaires, could have been healed. But we waited and allowed silence to arrest us. But in case you didn't know, I like giving history. Start my time when I read my scripture. Let me. I'm a prophet. I can't do that. Not with all he asked me to do. I can't do that. Understand me that from the book of Malachi through Matthew and further through, there was no more music. Heaven was on music sabbatical. Because, see, you don't hear, because their minister of music, Satan, had gotten fired. Look how quiet it got. Now, what did he say? Lucifer, Satan was the MD. And he felt that his part in ministry was so important that that's how God became as good as he was. Because he set the stage. Front row. I'm going to look at the second row. And he said, I will exalt my throne above the throne of God, which means music more important than the word. But man shall not live by bread alone. Oh, come on, man shall not live by songs alone. Man shall not live by drums alone, but by every word. <clears throat> that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Your miracle is not in my music or in my prophecy. It's in your mouth. Death and life, leave it like this, is in the power Of your tongue. I want to give honor to some people, but I hear the Lord speaking. All is all coming together at one time. But there's enough power in this house to chase every demon out of your house. 
Y'all sound like y'all believe that. One shall chase a thousand. Look down your row and ask somebody, do I have help in this row right now? Your power increases by 10,000. Your power, your power increases by 10,000. We're almost ready. So at the count of three, whatever posture you're in, I'm going to ask you to get up and praise with your mouth and your hands. I told you Satan got fired. The next time we'll hear heaven play music, not earth, is when the Lord shall come and they will play holy, 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 and, and all of that. But right now, heaven ain't had no music. That's why earth has an abundance of it. Heaven's been singing a cappello for a long time. But the next song you hear with music and trumpets is all praises be to the King of Kings for the Lord our God. He is wonderful. Then they sing hallelujah and then a new uh, a band comes in in the book of Revelations and they begin to play. But when Jesus was born, the angels sang with no music. Praise is a sound of his own. When the music stops, that's when real worship begins. But sometimes these new artists, their inability to sing is by how great the musicians play. And the backup singers sing better than the lead singer because stems and stacking. Y'all think I don't know, but I, I'm pretty aware. But you don't have to sing on key to praise. You don't have to be on point. You can be tone deaf and be an excellent praiser. You don't have to clap on the two and four. You can clap on the one, three and still be received as a praiser. So at the count of three, if you and one more person in your row for 30 seconds can go hardcore with hands, feet, and mouths, Remember what I said, it goes from thoughts to the heart, out of the mouth. From the mouth, the heart speaks. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall live by the fruit thereof. That means on the tip of your tongue is your funeral or your future. Will you tell somebody on the tip of my tongue is either my funeral or my future? Either your praise gets you in the casket or castle. That's all up to you. All right, at the count of three. Now let me tell God, all of this belongs to you. Whatever we're about to do. And before I do it, let me, let me call a John, Jonathan Williams down front, if he's in the building. Where's Jonathan? Hurry, hurry, you're holding me up. You're holding me up. Run, son, you're holding me up. Told you I can't do it all this quick, but I'm gonna do it as quick as I can. Stay right there, cause we gonna praise. Then I'm gonna prophesy to you. You are you nervous or are you okay? Let me give you a secret. Let me give you a secret. All my prophecies end up good. We've got folk in here that think prophecy should expose and make people repent, but prophecy is to exalt, edify, and comfort. The word of God is to rebuke, chastise, correct. So you got that wrong. That's why I know who is one and who's not. Cause you like to expose. And Jesus didn't use his divinity for any of that. He let women wash feet and everything and didn't care that they were hookers or prostitutes or had seven unclean spirits. It's the folk around that told him who they were. Then he had to tell that person who they weren't. Said, she kissed my feet, but you have not. You got to mind your business. 
sweep around your own front before you try to sweep around mine. So at the count of three, we're going to clap, give God glory. All my prophecies turned out fairly well. You know, why is most people named Jonathan spelled T-H-A-N, but yours is T-H-O-N? So your last four is spelled with an O. Very unusual. Okay, at the count of three. God is very detailed. And between row and three, I got like three jealous folk. Come do it. This could be your night. See, you can't do Dr. Vaughn and you can't do Dr. Hall. You got to do what you're called to do. And you got to appreciate folk who God has chosen. Then that mic will be placed in your hand. At the count of three, you're going to jump or clap, scream. But if that praise is authentic, I promise some of you, that October, write this down, is the month of fulfillment. Yeah. Write this down. We're exit, we exited a September to remember. But now God's gonna fulfill everything he spoke. I'm saying it again, October is the month of fulfillment. You're not going to believe this till you see it. November, according to most prophets, November, December, we're supposed to go through the greatest tribulation storm of our life. But God said, you that are in here, November will start enjoyment. <laughs> Write that down. The Bible said, in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. And at his right hand, where's the pleasure? Why everybody keep prophesying pain? What's wrong? Are you that miserable that your gift can't find something good to say? He died that we may live. He became poor that we may become rich. Why are you speaking stuff before the crucifixion? Jonathan, we're going to praise in 30 seconds. Let me get to you. The way you address, if you, if I'm right, if you run there and back screaming, you're going to have your own clothing line because God says. <laughs> Come here. You're very eclectic, but God says. This is how I'm going to tell you. He said, when I chose Peter to be one of my disciples, I went to Peter's job. He was a fisherman. Then I told Peter, now that you work for me, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. I never changed his occupation. What's, what's P-L-U-T-O or P-L-A-T-O? What's Pluto or Plato? You work? At what is it called? Plato's Closet. This is a clothing store. Are you the manager yet? Take a run. You're going to be worth a million dollars in your near future. Amen. That's all. We're not jealous. At the count of three. And remember, hold on, remember this is to the glory of God. All of you that are deep, that don't scream and holler, enjoy yourselves as you proclaim you have been. Is there a last name Calhoun in the building? Oh, you just walked up? Where were you? And you walked down that aisle. And God just so happened to say your name? Who called you down here? Nobody. 
You just freely walk down here, past security and everybody. <laughs> past that big man right there. <laughs> Go on home, man. What's your first name? Mar, Marlena, M-A-R-L-I-N-A, -A. yeah. A nickname, what's that, Milo? Mellow? How do you spell it? M-E-L-L. -L. That's why I said Milo, because I, I mean, I'm just going to say it the way I see it. I want to say something to you, because I don't know how you got up here, and I don't know how God gave me another name, because I'm ready to, us to praise him for all of us, but I'm doing it all at once. But the Lord said, tell you, when you walk across, he owes you some money, but God says this, I got to change her company. I got to keep her away from certain people. God says, because what I was going to do is make her rich, making her a traveling nurse. May I ask, what do you do for a living? You're a nurse. What type of nurse? A medical assistant right now. I'm going to have you walk in a minute and they're going to praise for you. We're going to go off together because if I keep doing this, I won't stop. Right? And uh, I am already tired. <laughs> but when you walk across, I want you to see God renovating, and I use that word strategically, your entire life. You will have no say-so on what God's about to do next for you. Start walking and we'll thank God for you. Enjoy yourself. All right, that was for her miracle. Now we got to get to yours. Put the camera on me. I don't know if this person is here or not. Celeste. 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 No, I don't know who I'm calling because I'm hearing the last name coming too, but I hear Celeste. And what was your last name? Her last name? All right, Celeste. Celeste, don't worry, I'm going to find out who's who in a minute. I don't know which one I'm calling. No, no, I can't prophesy to everybody. What's your last name? Sam. What's your last name? Celestin. Huh? Celestin. My last name is Celestin. Oh, so you're trying to get in on the back end. <laughs> What's your first name? Laurent, see, you trying to get in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ma'am, how long have you been living where you're living? 21 years. You're owning? You like it? What does this mean? <laughs> you what? Want something bigger. You would love to move. If I told you you were going to be able to pay half the mortgage you're paying now where you're going next and that it is about 850 square feet larger, that's what I see. I almost see a street. I feel so good tonight. Oh, I, oh, oh, I'll be right back because she's she going to get it. Camera, Celeste, your last name is uh, Ford. What happened? Somebody just said something. What did you say? She's not in the building? She sits where? So you know her? All right, so I said I need to look at the camera. She's in California, so you know her? Yes. You can text her? Yes. Tell her that I'm calling for her on the camera 
And the difference in the three Celestine and Celestes, her name starts with an S, so it's Celeste with an S versus a C. She's born on March 21st. I need you to call her. We need to go. Get on the phone. You. I'm not going to talk to her. You are. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm doing it this serious. What? Talk. To, I'll, listen, I'll do whatever you tell me. What now? <laughs> Celeste is on this camera. You got her on the phone. Celeste, listen. <laughs> Last name is Ford. I've got two things I need to say to you. One is when you get back, I need you to look for a new place to live. But I need you to know God sending an angel to someone named Alex. I think this is your son. Oh, you know him? Okay. Your son is being protected by angels that death will come not near him and near another son, born or not, named Melton. Not Milton, Melton, I think. So if it's true, somebody's trying to call you. I'm only talking to you because your pastor told me, talk through the camera. So I need you to praise God wherever you are, even though you're already out, if... If you got to get out the car and act a fool for 30 seconds, do what you need to do because your miracle is right at your fingertips and somebody ought to shout yes. You already know you're going to get your house. Young lady, how old are you? I want to say something to you because you shouldn't have came up here. You was about to walk back, but somebody probably persuaded you to stay there. Yeah, they nudged you, right? I see, I didn't see it, but I know something happened because when you heard me talking to this Celeste, you knew it wasn't you. You was going to walk back because your first name started with an L. I'm going to say something to you, and if you're serious about your life, did you go to college? Did you finish? If, uh, uh, did you get the forgiveness of student loan debt? You did. Now, what is going to... She over there like, come on, hit me real good. <laughs> What's going to happen for you by the time you get to your seat, if you scream and mean it, is God says the only thing left for me to change is her last name. <laughs> Y'all going to help Celestine? Because it won't be too long that we'll be calling her that. One more and I'm gone. We're going to praise together. You that been standing, you don't even know how much you're worth. No, no, you don't hear it. God said, them who did not sit, I'm going to increase their pay scale. Right? He said, because they did not change their posture. See, right now, we're in a prophetic freeze. Not paralysis. Hey, come here, man. You, come here. Shake my hand. It's all right, just shake my hand. How you doing? What's your name? Hector, my name Todd Hall. Man. Todd Maurice Romeo Hall. That's my real name. Oh, no, that's my real name. My mama's Spanish and my daddy's black. That's a fact. You learn something new every day. But I'm talking about my Boricua side. You understand, don't you? When the Lord had me call you, he said, tell him, I don't want to tell him anything deep except this. If he runs, if he chooses to run, every relative in his family will be saved. And 
two people will never see jail another day in their life. S-T-O-D-D-A-R-T, is that a name? Studot, Studot, Studot. Better hurry, you're the next person on the prophecy is right. Is that you? Come here, baby, let me talk to you. Spell your last name. Oh yeah, that's you. <laughs> what is your first name? Arisa. Arisa? Spell that. You know, we had a horrible experience 2001. The Twin Towers fell down in 911. When's your birthday? 911. <laughs> and, and, and I want to talk to you about it. Listen, I came to have fun. If you can't minister and have fun, shame on you. As I get older, I'm going to be smiling a whole lot more. And you that hate me, I'm going to give you a reason. I want you to know God is going to let you thrive in three businesses. You own three businesses now? Okay, in three businesses. Each one is going to gross millions. People are judging you by how you look, but you better not judge a book by its cover. i tell you one business. Can I do that? Taxes. You own the tax business? All right. So we want to start there, then we'll let you go to the other two in your own way. Be it accounting, be it certified trainer, be it a coach. Am I in there? Right. Um, did you get excited when I told Celestine that she was going to get married? You too. Look at somebody and tell them, God wants to give you what you are missing. Not more of what you have, he wants to give you what you are missing. Um, Bishop Murphy, I'm going to have you lay hands on her. I, I'm not touching anybody. I just wanted to shake Hector's hand. Because I don't do a lot of that. Nowhere in the world. I do it once in a blue moon. But when you lay hands on her, everything she's been missing longing for you're gonna get it merry christmas and a happy new year let's go and thank god for her last one we're gonna start that clock after this stand up sir How long have you known him? Years. Years? Good. Uh, what is your first name? Larry. What no one knows, and you should know a little bit of it, but not the fullness of it, but I'm going to have to tell you, this is not money, this is not house, this is not a marriage, this is something totally different that the Holy Spirit is telling me to say to you, and I'm hoping that you can feel the power on this word. What none of you know, and I'm hoping you still bring me as often as you do because when you don't, I'm just going to come and take the mic. I'm going to walk in to church. Is everything I can do, he should have been doing. 
He's a preacher. He's a prophet. Come to me. What you've been on a sabbatical for, I'm about to give it back to you. Come to me. Stand right there. We need you. I know you went through your storms. I know you got over it by yourself. I know certain things are still not in line like you desire. But God's been waiting on you. And I also know that you lost a little hope for church and preachers because the power is missing. You don't talk to everybody, but you have been very dissatisfied, not with God, but with the presentation of God. So, what I fight to keep, which means I'm disliked and will forever be disliked because I don't care who likes me anymore. I need you to not think you're going to need friends on this journey. But you're going to get your family back, your life back, you're going to get your joy back, your peace back, and your calling back. Bishop, I've never done this before. Come up with me. And when you see me reach my hand for his head, you and I are going to do it simultaneously. Because I want you to have the oil of where you play and the oil of what you should be. I think I'm crying because I know most of the prophets that I know are not prophets. They're gifted individuals. Most of these people that call themselves apostles are not that whatsoever. Or they wouldn't be so emotional and temperamental. But you, my friend, we're going to get to know each other in the future. We're going to meet somewhere at the top. But I want you to be fully restored. Can we? You ready? Let's go. In the name. I don't hear no praise up in here. All right, at the count of three, for one to two minutes, then I need to read the scripture, and we're going to go home. Robakasa, she can come up, pray, do whatever she wants, whenever she wants to. We go back 40 years. Ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-
Shebeteando. Don't play with it. Come on, one more minute. Oh, Jesus. Yes! Hey, 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 hey! Don't hold it! Don't whisper! The Bible said, make a joyful noise! Thank you, Jesus. Open that mouth, Pleasant. Thank you, Jesus. Your miracle got to get closer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yata, me the answer behind. Come on, DJ. Come on. It. Get a new church building, not just a roof and some floors. Hey! This is the last ten seconds. I want you to go hug this woman while she's walking, you, pastor, because she ain't supposed to be walking. But God says, I'm about to straighten everything out from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet tonight. And somebody ought to scream, yes! Come on, we don't need music everywhere. Yes! Right, be seated near someone that's hungry. Clock can start. I'm flying. Oh, my soul loves you, Jesus. Hey, I feel prayer. Somebody been praying. Somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind took some time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I need about 300 out of all of you in here that's serious about this month to just jump up and shout, it's already done. It's already done. Be seated.
It's in your mouth. It ain't in my mouth. It's in yours. Be responsible for your own self. We'll say this to you, Bishop. Even though we're close and we respect and love one another, one day this month, don't make it this week because I have to be ready to talk to you. There's a new level coming to your ministry, but right now God is going through a filtering process. You need to be in a place called quietness and be prepared for what he's restructuring. This church is about to explode. But right now, the enemy is trying to implode from bombs that are set from the inside. But got the answer! But God said, by the middle of the month, things will shift for the better. You have survived the worst season. Oh, y'all, talk to him of your life. The rest at another time difference in true prophets and prophets that are just gifted is they don't know what to say and what to hold. They want to prove they know it all, but only God knows it all. The book of Mark chapter 5. I gave it over to the Lord and he worked it out. You say, oh yeah. Oh, the Lord spoke to me again. You didn't have to tell me after I prophesied and you ran across your stage, somebody who's a woman from hood or somebody came back. Oh, you didn't call me. The Lord just showed it to me. You're cheating. The word of the Lord came to pass. But I'm going to give you grieving privileges tonight. But I'll call you in about a year. We'll talk about this next year. The book of Mark chapter 5. And I want 30 of you to speak up like I prophesied to you. Because, because you may need the message, not a prophecy. One thing about a prophecy, it will fail, especially if the recipient won't make adjustments. But the word of God stands on his own two feet. Mark chapter 5, you know what this is, the woman with the issue of blood, but I want to go to Mark 6 after this. Then let me uh, hopefully prepare a good piece of meat, because a good piece of meat makes its own gravy. I don't want no canned gravy on this steak right here, so y'all push me. Mark chapter 5, verses, thank you, Pastor Anjali, uh, verses 25 through 30. A certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, suffered many things of many physicians, spent all she had, was nothing better, but rather got worse. Have you ever lived better, but things keep getting worse? Talk loud on your behalf. Yeah, because I'm going to put an end to all of this through the Holy Writ. When she heard of Jesus, somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. No, no, he's our King of King and Lord of Lords. Shout the name Jesus. Jesus. Came in the press behind, touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. That word whole is the Greek word sozo. I got members from my Shabbat church too. But that word whole, W-H-O-L-E, is the word in Greek sozo. That word sozo for 30 folk will jump means whatever I'm getting delivered from can never come back. That's what it actually means. It means once I'm through with this, it cannot come back. When you get healed, you can get the same issue. But when you're made whole, it cannot come back. So do you want to be healed or be made whole? 
There's some folk Jesus said you are healed, but then there's other folk he said be thou made whole. I don't ever want to see certain situations ever again. If you believe that's going to happen to you this month, shout yes. If I may touch but the hem of his clothes or his clothes, I shall be made sozo, whole. Straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that the virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and he asked a question. And the question is, who touched my clothes? Can I get some preacher help? Because after church, all the preachers talk a lot after church downstairs, but they won't talk upstairs. I just need a little bit of conversation. Who touched my clothes? Now, this is the only time we hear about uh, hymns of garments being touched, and everybody that's ever preached this, this is in three or four of the Gospels, definitely in three. We talk about the woman with the issue, but we never ever show people that this was not a one time or one opportunity to do the same thing. So I want you to turn your attention to Mark chapter 6, verse 55 and 56 only, and let me say it first and see if my 30 debt free folk jump. And that's this. She's not the only one to take this route. If God can make Reverend Brian wealthy and Bishop Murphy wealthy and Overseer Dean wealthy and Dr. Todd Hall wealthy, you don't have to be no preacher. You got to repeat the process. If you want what I want, don't try to get it taking shortcuts. Because then when you brag about what you have, you have no bragging rights because you don't have a testimony. See, you get the story, but God has to get the glory. Will you tell somebody, it's my story, but God has to get the glory. And to get the glory out of your story, you have to go through something and get out of it when you know others died in it. This woman could have said, I'm almost ready to preach for 10 folk who help me preach. You can brag at your haters and look them in the face and say, what you died from, I learned to live with. Now, every now and then. See, y'all not helping me in the second row now. This woman is already a miracle because she's been going through this 12 straight years. Some of you lost your mind over a man who cheated the first year. You still, ah, uh, ah, uh, what you, 12 years of hemorrhaging, 12 years of non-stop issue. Let's look what Mark chapter 6, 55, 56 says. And you that catch the story and know where I'm going and stand up early, Watch how quick God blesses you. It says, and ran through the whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those who were sick where they heard he was. They brought people out of the ICU. Can I modernize it? And took them in the bed with IVs, disconnected them and said, just get them to Jesus. Good God, just get them to Jesus. The doctor said, you got to sign an affidavit. You got to sign papers because once you move them out of here, they're not our responsibility. It don't matter, doc, because when I go, I ain't coming back because I'm going for a sozo. Y'all ain't Front row won't talk. Give me the third row. See, you sat close hoping to get a prophecy. The prophecy is not in your seat. Whether he entered into a village or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and then went and besought Jesus that he would touch them, even if it were the border of his garments. Oh, this ain't the same one, this next chapter. And as many as touched him, so even though eight got a prophecy, it don't mean God ain't talking to you. You just mad because you want the same process. I 
take the promise over the process. Will you tell somebody, I'll take a quiet promise over a loud process. People who are really wealthy don't want other people to know. Like right now, whether they say hallelujah prophetically or uh, uh, purposefully, you are sitting next to a millionaire. They ain't got on no Gucci, no Louis, no Fendi, no Louis Vuitton. They just chilling. It's a Tuesday night. We got chlorine in the air. Schools being shut down because of gun violence. This shows, and if you read another chapter, it said, when the men heard that this woman touched, all the men who were sick ran, fell at the ground, crawled, and touched his gum. Now, all of you that feel left out, because I'm about to read my two paragraphs and try to holler, but 50 of you ought to get happy. If God spoke to someone you knew and you didn't get happy for them, you don't deserve anything. Because if we're friends, when I see my friend or my colleague getting blessed, I rejoice. You don't know if that person's going to be blessed enough to pay your bills off for you. I hate to make this announcement that most rich, wealthy people are cheap, but let's move forward. The Bible says, I'm taking my topic, I'm about to tag the text and take a subject, and the 30 that jumped, I said 300, but I'm down to 30. How did she get healed, Dr. Vaughn? She never touched him. She touched his clothing. She never, look at the deep folk, I ain't touched him. She touched what was on him. I got a simple topic, because a lot of people don't know the church has gone through 10 years of straight ups and down, hell, roller coaster rides, simply because, and I hope somebody screamed, they've not been using the right material. I'm almost there. I want to call this, then I'm going to subtopic, but my 30 folk is Jesus material. Touch somebody and tell them Jesus material. Now, I want you to look at the same neighbor, ask them this and watch their behavior. Ask them, what material are you made out of? Yeah, yeah, look at them. Because y'all got Jesus looking like money. Jesus is not money. Jesus is not a Ferrari. See, you, you see how, but he's the creator of those things. No, he's not. Man made money. Man made cars. God created man. So God created what he gave man the power to create. And y'all are chasing what man made instead of chasing who made man. say it again I know they think I'm messing up but about the end they'll be shouting like amen but no man can serve two masters I'm reading the Bible they either have to love one and hate the other am I in the Bible preachers Cause I'm looking at some of y'all that I watch on YouTube, streaming, real TV, and you ain't talking to me tonight. Then Jesus makes it plain what those two masters are. God and money. Okay. God and money. The cure 
for that for the handful of us that may have a little money but money don't have us it's simply this for 30 folk who would jump seek ye first oh y'all gonna get debt free tonight the kingdom of God some of y'all only standing up because you busted and it's righteousness and all these shall be added unto thee. Let me say this and see if you scream. You pay bills with money, God don't. If you need a miracle, then some part of your reality must cease to exist. A miracle is not figured out, it's received. If I'm blind and I come back seeing, I'm like the man in John 9. Don't ask me, all I know is he said. See, some folk are jealous of you because you caught up with them without having the resources that they had. How you get that house? You ain't even got no husband. I don't need one. How did you get yours, Prophet Hall? How did you get yours, you who really went through the storm? I cried and I cried. I'ma have church. I cried all night long. Give me a sanctified church. I cried and I cried until I found the Lord. My soul just couldn't rest content. Now I'm laughing. God says, I'm going to make 24 mi millionaires tonight. Even though there's thousands in here, God said, I'm only going to guarantee 24. And that's the 24 that said, Lord, even if you don't do it. Some of us actually don't need a million dollars to be debt free. We just need 250. Some of these people that are bragging and giving God glory from a story that has a little vanity present. Let me hip y'all the game so 50 y'all can talk to me. They do have all the millions that they have. You don't even have a half of one. But they do have it. But let me tell you why they have it and see if 30 of you go off and you got to go hard for real. They have it because God knows they're going to have to pay for the mistakes that they made with it. So God's grace is so good, he gave them future money to pay for future issues. But your money is going forward. Y'all, your money is not being consumed by anything you did before. All right. If this makes sense, will you come up and just high five me, then I get on the train. If the woman with the issue of blood, I'm not going to preach about her, I'm just using her text. If she's bleeding like Dr. Bryant preached, and like I know you have, and like I know I have, but we have three different angles, that's why there's four different gospels, we see it from different perspectives. And Dr. Vaughn, then I said that the only way that the people knew she had a blood issue and that she was hemorrhaging is that there was a leakage, right? People didn't see your issue, but the news of it leaked. Y'all understand, don't you? And what you? They not with me on this side tonight, but y'all stay with me. So, she's so dizzy from the longest menstruation cycle that any woman's ever had that she can't see. But she's crawling with a little dizziness and she's leaking. And the public saw the leak, so they said unclean. When they called her unclean, everybody has to move away from the infected guests. Let me say this for somebody who will go crazy by yourself. The reason why it got out was to show you who's really for you and who's not. If you back off me when something leaks, okay, I can get my head. I 
to try her a bit. Oh, cop it, you're not talking to your dad. Yeah. Unclean, 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 unclean. What the folk that backed off of her did not recognize for another scream, every scream has a purpose, is her situation gave her a clear path to her solution. Right? So the reason why God's making folk move away from you is he wants you to see him again. Come see me. You caught up with the crowd and the crowd is only with you as long as nothing leaks. Come see me. I didn't get my high five, but I knew you was coming, so I'm going to stay right here and wait on it. Come on up here and give me my high five. And talk to that camera right there. No, no. She's leaking. She gets to Jesus. I got two more things to say. She touches the border. We're going to talk about this later. Of his garment. And she is made whole. She, for those women who were screaming to show men how to scream. She didn't get a prophecy that she was healed. She felt it. And any of you that feel rich, be rich. Any of you that feel healed, be healed. Feel it for yourself. She felt not in the spirit, in her body. Watch it. All y'all, I feel in the spirit. No, I want to feel in the natural. When is everything that's in the spirit going to come into fruition? I want to tell you a secret because you and I talk like this. He and I do too, but I got to wait. But we talk like this. Dr. Vaughn and I, we talk like this whenever we get a chance. But capture this and this makes sense. Somebody hug me quick. Watch this. The healing was never, I said never, give me a chance to fix this bitch of white, never in the hem of his garment. Oh no, she got healed touching it. But the healing was not in the hem of the garment. If I do this, I don't like wasting my teaching. But if I do this, go off. It got there when she put it there. She said, if I can touch just the hem of his cloak. Tonight you got power to put it where you can reach it. You got to put it. You better not. She couldn't get up from the ground, so she put it in the gown. She knew. God never promises you something that's out of your reach. I'm almost done. If I could touch the hem of his gum. And look at what it says for those who are theologians. She said to herself. Not to anybody else. Certain things you can't make public. Because if you tell folk where you're going, they'll try to stop you from getting there. Oh Lord, I'm going to talk to 10 people who will scream. God's going to put it where you felt it. Keep your mouth shut. She crawls. It's where she said it would be. She and Jesus says back to her for 10 people who touched my clothes then the disciples said y'all trying to preach it but you better learn it and then you better scream so I'll know you're eating it he 
Then Peter said, all of these people thronging you? And you ask, who touched you? He said, no, this touch got something out of me. Because everybody else that touched him didn't say nothing. Y'all ain't just you gonna get from somebody that you ain't holding no conversation no dialogue his name ain't in your mouth some of you go to church not to even have church you ain't said Jesus one time all you did was sing the songs run around but at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow let me be old school every tongue shall come talk to me I felt the virtue. Believe me. Third thing I want to say. That was two down. I got two more to go. Here's the third thing. You that are standing, y'all doing my heart so well. But catch this and go crazy over your own miracle. You ready? If I may touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be made well. Who touched me? And then it was this woman. Jesus says, daughter, thy faith. Major, what was the faith? She spoke something being somewhere that she didn't actually know would be there, but when she got there, it was where she spoke it. That's faith, calling those things that be not. That's like going to get a house. When I get to the bank, my credit score gonna be 855. You know, you know you got a 650. But on your way there, God start playing with computers. I'm preaching, making some adjustments that will honor your faith. This way I want my high five again. Here we go, Lady D. People that don't like you ain't gonna never like you. See, I can't hear you. They gonna like what you do. But they gonna never like you. Let me give you proof from the text. If the text makes sense, nice sneakers, jump for me and them sneakers, jump for me, little nephew that's still young, don't get old too fast. Jump and captivate this text. You ready? If she got healed, Dr. Brian, from the issue of blood that was a plague, and if Jesus has called her out to announce and verify that she's healed, and he also says, y'all not talking out of his own mouth, she's my daughter. She said, daughter of Abraham, thy faith. Y'all ain't got to talk, have made, you know, some people don't like you just because of what others call you. I'm telling you now. That's my friend. Oh, really? When y'all become friends. How long y'all known each other? I thought you just met last week. Here's how you know haters will always be haters and you need to jump on this because you're going to need it and about 800 of you catch it. You ready? If I heard Jesus say that the virtue needed for that situation left him and went into her, then why wouldn't folk with an issue now reach for her? Y'all don't slow bust. He just relocated the healing. He just relocated. He said, everything the pew has access to, I'm going to give to the pew. Now folk in the pew won't even reach the other people in the pew because you caught up with popularity. Forget the process. Forget the popularity. All I need is somebody that's got Jesus material. I'm almost there. I, 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 am, I am so baffled that they didn't go to her and say, give me what you took out of him. That's real hatred when people know they've lied on you so bad 
that they don't even know how to say nothing good about you when it's time. Uh oh, all right. Now the whole church quiet. How are you going to act? I'm going to see who screams now when God puts what you need in who you don't like. You just going to go home miserable or you going to humble yourself and touch something that you used to talk negative against. Sometimes God will let your enemies have a season of tearing you apart. Then when he puts you back together, he puts what's in you that they need and says, now let's see whether they say the same thing about you again. I have a saying at my church with seven fleeting moments before I yell. I want to see if this side will yell. I come over here. I was over there because that's where the elders of the church are. But let me talk to the folk in the pew. And let me say this for 30 folk who will scream. I said this to the members of my church in Orlando. I said, some of us can't get a miracle. This side ain't talking because we're too busy looking for the God in the air instead of the God in the chair. If God's going to give you $10,000, he got to find somebody on earth to put in it, right? And you so busy acting deep looking up when you should be looking horizontal. Your miracle's been here. You just ain't talking to each other. You got attorneys in here. You've got business people in here. You have realtors in here. And folks, I'm praying about a house. Why are you praying when you should be talking? Did you know the issue is your head is so far up that you can't see that God has hibernated himself, camouflaged himself in the person you sit next to right now. She bleeding. I'm about to go to church. She bleeding. She's leaking. I told you I had two more things. So here goes the last one. And let's see a 50 year old start jumping up like you hit the lottery. You ready? The blood on her dress is fresh, but the situation is old. People are judging you by material. No facts. All of this is inadmissible material. They said, let me give a hard, this is sobering, but let me give a hard example. And the first 10 to jump for me, because you're pushing me, you'll get a miracle within 48 hours. It is hard when people see you anointed, then they dig in your past and they find something and they say, no, no, hear me. I want to give you a hard thing. And they look at you and said, I know you anointed, but I heard you were gay. Now, being that I'm in Atlanta, I might as well say that. So let me say something and see if y'all scream. You should have not gotten mad at what they said because their motive was wrong, but their English was right. You said were. And were is past. Y'all ain't talking. You had to go into my yesterday because you're threatened by my tomorrow and my presence is already secure. Y'all ain't with me. I thought y'all were with me like 10 toes down on the ground, but it's okay. The issue was dried up in her, but the blood on her was still fresh. So because people see the material is still fresh, they think the situation is still alive. I got proof. I've got evidence. Y'all gonna leave me by myself? I'm coming over there because I know that's where my help coming from. But I gotta be respectful. Dr. Jamal, if this makes sense, just stomp your foot. If the blood is leaking and she is crawling forward to Jesus, I want to hear the loudest scream. The only way they see the blood is they got to look behind her. 
I'm moving forward, but I'm bleeding backwards. Y'all in, but I'm walking. You don't qualify for a miracle until your past gets out. What the old church say? Let me hear a B flat. The old church said, I'm sorry, you can talk about me as much as you can. But the more you talk, I'm going to stay on my knees. Look at somebody and tell them, I don't care what went on in your past. If you ain't dead by now, God's decided for you to live. Live. No, no, say it with power to a neighbor. Live. I'm feeling better. E flat. My Lord. Yep, yep, yep. The problem as I close is that this church, new birth that I was blessed to speak at, the hundreds and thousands of churches that I have stood in pulpits around the world, more miracles were accessible. I'm gonna see if you scream. When the sermons were built around Jesus material. Just grab somebody like that's your friend and tell them Jesus is on the main line. Hi. Tell him what you want. Tell somebody else, have you tried Jesus? He's on. He's all right. If we can get Jesus back where he belongs. I tried him and I know him. I want some wealthy folk now. I found him to be a friend. I know too much about him. See, you don't know or you'll be told. On him, I can depend. Save my soul. Made me whole. There's none like him. There is a name that I love to hear. And I love to sing his worth. It sounds like music. I'm going home now in my ear. It's the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Whoa, how I love Jesus. See, some of y'all ain't talking, you love money. But the love of money is the root of all evil. But I call Jesus. See, once I can get churches around the world to go back to talking about Jesus, heaven's gonna open wide. The blind will see again. The deaf will hear again. The dumb will talk again. The lame man will take up his bed and walk. Even the dead shall resurrect from the grave. Get somebody by the hand and act like that's your friend and say all the money you need, all the healing you need, all the joy you need, all the credit you desire is wrapped up in one name. That name is 
is Jesus. Lily of the valley. Bright and morning star. Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The fire. Oh, shucks. Let's have a little church there. Touch somebody and tell them that's where the miracle is. It's in your excitement about who Jesus is. Who is he? He's Mary's boy. God's son. The sheep that was slaughtered. The lion of the tribe of Judah. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. He's a light in the darkness. Shake somebody like you're happy tonight and ask your neighbor, who is he? Who is Jesus to you? Bread when I'm hungry. Water when I'm thirsty. Friend to the friendless and hope to the hopeless. Bridge over troubled water. Shelter in the time of storm. Mother to the motherless. Father to the fatherless. Doctor in the sick room. Lawyer in the courtroom. Ladder climbing up. An axe laid at the root. You need to grab somebody's hand. Like you know they are a new homeowner. And say neighbor. Oh neighbor. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Don't give him no price. Don't tell him you're broke. But if I call Jesus, yes, sir, he will answer prayer. I dare somebody to shake three or four people and tell him in the name of Jesus, be debt free. In the name of Jesus, be healed of mental illness. In the name of Jesus, be healed of your heartache. Say, as a matter of fact, I'm sending Jesus to your address, to your job. Because he's the same yesterday. He's the same today and forevermore. Shake a neighbor like you're happy and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, congratulations on surviving the worst season of your life. Ask them, how did you survive it? I came to Jesus just as I was, I was weary. I was worn and I was sad, but I found in him. Tell somebody and say, neighbor, I'm gonna leave you alone after this. But say you and I need a miracle we need God to do something by tomorrow and if the prophet is truly a prophet and I cannot touch the actual Jesus can you tell me what material you're made out of because if you know Jesus all I need to do is touch you because the virtue that I is in another brother is in another believer and where there's two or three gathered together in my name touching and agreeing touch your brother touch your sister and say be healed be set free be delivered right now from the crown 
leave you alone because it's obvious you're still waiting on money you're still waiting on an engagement ring you're still waiting on getting married but what i need tonight is to have a little talk with jesus tell him all about my troubles he'll hear our faithful cry he'll answer by lady is doing is saying Jesus that's all 200 of you need to do is clap your hands and just say Jesus come on let the world hear us let you too let every platform hear a church clapping their hands and call Jesus Thank you. Oh yeah, ba 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 ha shi ya ta ya ba. Ina na na ba ho shi ya kata ba ha. Oh, bi an san na ne yang so. Ina na sho. Ina sho na ma ye. All right, I'm closing, but listen to this, Dr. Bryan. Thank you for your support, but listen to this. All thousands of you, look at me. Let me close on Mahashia. Let me close with two things. One is this. If you change the material, you chase the miracle. We got to go back to sermons that in and out of it, we hear the name that makes the words we say activated. We cannot have y'all screaming louder for things than we do for the God that's created everything. When I think, that's too old school for y'all, of the goodness, come on, of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul, Hallelujah. Thank God. Not for the house cards and money, but for saving. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved, he's here, a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now the Holy Ghost is here. I'm found, was blind. But now I see. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come. It was grace that brought us safe thus far. And grace. Grandma used to sing this. Y'all don't remember this, but whoever does and scream, you will get it. I want Jesus to walk with me. Hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand. 
And then it said this, Dr. Vaughn knows it, but y'all ain't talking. It said, if Jesus, Jesus said, if you go, I'll go with you. All the way. Watch it. Open up your mouth. I'll speak for you. Lord, if I go, tell me what to say. Because they won't believe in me. You're holding the hand of a person who's being healed from the crown of their heads. From diseases that they know of and infirmities that they have no idea that they have. But because they're touching Jesus material. Oh God, I, know. I know I'm not him, but I'm what he wears. I'm going to say that again. I'm not him, but I'm a representative of him. You got to put on the whole armor. You got to put on that gun. As you're holding Kashandai, I know musicians want to play. They feel the Holy Ghost, but let me get you over. She does not hashanda. We're going home within 15. She does not bleed forward. Backwards. I want all of you that got good ears and common sense who love Jesus more than jewels. I want you to scream as loud as you can on this. The Lord says your forward path is clear. All right, stop. One more thing, little brother, even though you act like the older brother. Hear this. You can use this. Bishop White can use this. The whole world needs to start using this. When Jesus told them, get into the ship that I preached to the church, told them to go to the other side, this has nothing to do with that sermon. They got into what he told them to get into and they went to the other side. The storm rages. It's unrebukable. Because it has no demons in it. The storm has an assignment, not an assassination. And the assignment... Hold on, hold on. This is for 500 of you who know you're going to be debt free miraculously. The assignment was to let the people in the ship know you can get nowhere without him. Y'all, I can't make it without Jesus. Oh, y'all, the storm slowed them down until Jesus came walking. Whatever situation you're in, it's not an assassination. It has an assignment. The assignment is stop trying to get somewhere without him. Will you tell somebody what I just said and see if they heard what we said? Stop trying. Jesus needs to go to your college, your dorms. Jesus needs to go with you to work and to court. Jesus needs to go with some of you even to the bathroom. I don't want to go. You're holding the hand of a debt-free child of God. You let him go that quick. If you saw my notes, you would ask me to send them to you. We've never done that, but I'm not going to show them to you. But it does say this. As a matter of fact, I want to show you. Come here, Bishop Murphy. This, this is your church. I'm going to read these two paragraphs. I'm going to see your response, but I'm going to see their reaction. You ready? I thought I wrote this for somebody last night, but it was for your church. Prophetically, in this service of worship, everything you need and desire Jesus to do is based upon who you come in contact with. Oh. I'm not going to scroll because you're not seeing the rest of the notes. You have your own. I watch you every Sunday. You've got your own. Contact determines what you contract. You're reading ahead of me. I see you. Also, I'm going to run in a minute. On a deeper note, let's see if the front catch it. And draw lines between your company, your circle, and your corner. Because Christ is only in one of these.
Go line to your company, your circle, in your corner. On this last sentence, I'll see if y'all up front will scream. Each one of these layers must get smaller as you mature. So if you don't make room, God will make a rumor. If he has to make you bleed to make them leave, he'll use that. Last sentence, come closer because you make me look good on the camera. Everyone, this is my last sentence. We're not doing any of this, so don't look. Everyone you hold company with cannot handle what your circle can see. And those in your circle may get jealous and can't be in your corner. Whoever's in your corner, they will stay in your corner. He was called the chief cornerstone, not circle. Jesus is not your company. I'm prophesying to now 18 of you out of so many who will scream loud for you and your family. God says, in November, you will corner the market. Why? Because you will not go out there without him. You remember the last song? Without God, I would be nothing. Without him, I would fail. Without him, my life would be drifting like a ship. You're holding the hand now of a person whose soul is no longer in jeopardy. Don't let them go. Don't let them feel like they got to keep looking up when they can look right at you. How can you not be Jesus material, but you can cast out demons? How can't you be Jesus material, but you can lay hands on the sick and they recover? Just don't catch and make your clothes his Christ. You'll never be him. Dr. Jamal, in correct term, Dr. Murphy. Morehouse, Duke, Oxford, Union, Howard, wherever we from. We, I challenge you for the rest of this year, you don't have to accept challenges, that no matter what God gives you to say, put his name all through it. And everything you say he said, he's going to do because of his name. The church has gotten a little sidetracked, giving man more screams than Christ. <clears throat> We've gone a little far. We've become more famous than Jay-Z, Diddy and all. But you don't want to be them now, do you? You glad that you didn't go to that top. You glad that God took you through years of struggle because <clears throat> you didn't know he was using your problem to protect your promise. I could have gone there. I never do it here. I sing. I play. I write. I prophesy. I do all of this since a kid. My brothers are in the secular world. I've got connections. I've never used any of them. I've prayed for actors, basketball players. I could have told them, write a check for 100 grand. I got a word for you. Never sold the prophecy. Oh, I was tempted to. See how folk lie? But God told me, if you wait on me. He said, Todd, I know you want to do it, but I need somebody that will just hemorrhage. I bled to death. I wrote one line underneath there that you were trying to get to as you're holding that hand. Now the line says this, 
them 50 of you look like you're wealthy, whatever that look is. The line says this, Dr. D, Pastor D. It says these words. It says that we all must be careful how we got this sickness. Whatever she had, she didn't squeal on or snitch on anybody else. The excuses never surfaced. But he asked her, y'all didn't preach this part. He said, tell me how you got it. And she told him everything. Oh, y'all, oh, y'all skip past that. No, she didn't just get healed and walk away with a secret. She told him, not you. I don't have to confess to you. The Lord said, if you tell me, he'll forgive you. Who are you? It said, confess, let me get out of here. She got sick. What made her get well? If this makes sense, just wave at me, sis. 30 of you wave and catch it. He'll catch it. Then he'll wave at me when he feels real good later tonight. Catch this and scream. What was her problem from getting healed? She had enough money to keep going to the doctor. And once she spent all she had, who comes into focus? Oh, it got quiet there. What blinded her for 12 years? At least three of his time on earth? Her money. Dr. Jamal, if this makes sense, just stomp lightly, stomp lightly. This is what it says. Let me modernize it for my favorite section right now. I love all y'all, but let me modernize it. This is what it says. If it makes sense, I'm going to hug you. And that's Richard, my armor bearer from, from out in Florida. But catch this. In normal picture, biblical prophecy, her money was only good to keep her in the hospital with doctors. But once her insurance lapped, somebody had to tell her, we need this bed. People who knew her for 12 years now acted like they don't know her at all because she's ran out of what they want. One little girl, I'm making it modern, I didn't see a foot stomp, so I'm not there yet, said, we'll put you in the wheelchair and I can only take you as far as the exit. This is hospital uh, property. We're escorting you off and I know you're dizzy and can't walk, but when I get you to the exit, you have to make it on your own. While the girl's rolling her, I'm seeing it. If it makes sense, then you scream for your dad. She probably told her in her ear, don't tell nobody I told you this. But every patient we can't heal, they've been going down the block to this man. And he done heal everything we can. How much he charged? Nothing. What's his name? Jesus. She said, will he see me? He said, it's packed every day at that free clinic. And he ain't even got a license to practice. If you get to him, if he see you, you're going to be healed. And in closing, for two people in the back, you lost your money, but you won't lose your life. And if you get your health back, you can always recover in the financial area. So I wrote. I worked myself to death 
but I crawled myself to life. Hard work is about to be over for most of you. Because God is going to exchange labor for reward. Now don't let the hand go for one minute. Keep the hand. Because you don't know who you're touching and they might be who you need to see when you go to the bank. You might get to the bank for a loan and be like, oh, you the person that didn't want to hold my hand. I saw Dr. Jamal when he was 17, 18. I've known him that long. I knew that he would surpass me. The only thing I had to work on him with, which now he surpassed me in, was he was a and me, and at the time he didn't believe in what he was seeing. This ain't real. And I wanted to rebuke him or something, but the Lord said, that's mine. You got to love him into this. I was like, no, that boy rude. <laughs> oh, no, you mature now, but you know you was rude at Simmons Memorial. You, Ron, Dave. He baptizing people in the kiddie pool. This man crazy. I told him, one day you're going to be doing the same thing. Mm -mm. Now I see him preach on Sunday. I said, that ain't real. <laughs> You've got to want somebody to do better than you. You can't get jealous because they're better than you to show you that there's a higher height that God wants you to reach. So he'll put success in your face to see how serious you are about becoming successful. As you're holding that hand, bow your heads, play something soft, David. Play something nice on the keys. Because God know I feel glory. Bishop William Murphy, go come stand in front of this podium. Move this podium back for him. Let him stand there. This is a wonderful picture of me. I look cockeyed, though. <laughs> see, you've got to see how real friends socialize. Because the church is becoming so desensitized. Everybody's so deep, crass, dry. As you get old, you're going to wish you smiled a lot. You're going to wish you played a few more games. You're going to wish that you had that ace of spades on your head for the last book. Oh, yeah. No, Dr. Vaughn, you don't play no spades, do you? Go ahead. I love you. And bit loose here, the blood of Jesus. Now, listen. These are the years of balance. To be blessed means to be balanced. To live as a human as long as you can because one day we'll all be going home.